Hi, this is Vashi Nedomansky. I'm a film editor based out of Los Angeles, and I wanted to first of all welcome you and thank you for taking part in my post-production quick course, which consists of 10 videos and also a 69-page PDF that will go further into depth into all the topics that we're going to talk about over the next 10 weeks. I would also like to thank Dell and NVIDIA for providing this powerhouse mobile workstation, which will be given away at the conclusion of this 10-week course. Well, we've made it to chapter 10 to cover master file and the deliverables. But before we start, I want you to check your chapter 10 email where there's an updated link to an updated PDF of the entire course. We went in and made sure that all the photos are in high resolution so you could zoom in and see the important facts and the stats and the actual numbers that I use on my presets and preferences. So that's all updated. You can download it from the latest email that you just received for chapter 10. Now that our film is locked and we're not gonna make any more changes, we begin the last critical stages of post-production which includes creating the master file. From this file, we can generate all the deliverables for distribution, theatrical markets, and web delivery of our final film. For Six Below, we had to actually deliver 14 different deliverables. That includes the Blu-ray version, the standard definition version, the different aspect ratio versions, the TV version, the web online version, and the Barco Escape version, and there's a couple more as well. During editorial, the film is crafted into a complex tapestry of video clips, effects, transitions, music, sound, dialogue, and graphics. Once this painstaking process is done, months of work get compressed into one file. This is the master file, also known sometimes as the Texas Master. This master file is created at the highest resolution possible with the highest output audio, usually a 5.1 or 7.1 audio mix, and with the least amount of compression possible. We will often use ProRes 422HQ or ProRes 4444 or Cineform to create that master file at the highest resolution. One thing to note, in our Windows workflow, we found the Cineform codec to encode a lot faster than ProRes given any source file that we started with. Always ask the people or the company that you're delivering the film to for a spec sheet so you can match exactly what they require and you'll pass QC, quality control, and not have the film bounced back and force you to create another deliverable. Our post-production supervisor, Mike McCarthy, created 20 custom media encoder presets to help us get the final deliverables all at once because we could batch encode through Adobe Media Encoder. These presets were imported into Adobe Media Encoder to be available. Then we would drop in our master file and apply as many presets as we needed and batch encode so they would all be done at once. We could step away, we could have a coffee, or we can go back to Premiere Pro and continue editing something else. Also, to get faster encoding, I enabled in both Premiere Pro and Media Encoder under the preferences we turned on the hardware accelerated encoding, which lets us harness the power of the NVIDIA Quadro GPUs that we used extensively on this project. Lastly, we had to create several DCPs, which are the digital cinema package, which is the industry standard for projection during editorial when we would have screenings, and even for the final DCP that everyone watched in the theaters once Six Below came out. We used Premiere Pro's built-in Raptor DCP option on the export to create both 2K and 4K DCPs with both stereo and or 5.1 audio, so it plays great in a theater. Raptor Pro is limited with some of its options and settings, but it was powerful enough and reliable enough to make a 4K DCP that we got to screen at Steven Spielberg's private theater at Amblin in Burbank. In the end, we chose DCP-O-Matic, which is free software that works on both Windows and Mac to create our final 4K and 2K DCPs. 
It gives you ultimate control over the bit rate for both video and audio. You can make up to 7-1 mixes. And if it's good enough for Rob Legato to make the Jungle Book 4K DCP, then it was definitely good enough for us and the results were spectacular. DCP-O-Matic also gives you the option of encrypting a key to the DCP so it can only be played on a certain machine or at a certain time and you're guaranteed secured and safety, which is another primary goal in our industry. We cannot let these films get out before they're ready. And with that, that brings us to the end of the 10 chapter quick course. I hope this deep dive into my workflow will give you some ideas and some tips and tricks to tackle any project that you come up against and hopefully give you the confidence to be able to harness the technology so your creativity comes out and you're not being blocked by the computer and you can just tell your story. I'd also like to thank once again Dell and NVIDIA for giving us the tools to be able to tackle these challenges and between the Dell workstations and the NVIDIA Quadro GPUs our process was made easier, we had shorter days, we had less downtime, and we got to the finish line quicker. So thank you to them for helping support this entire project and making it free for everyone. And also don't forget, we will be giving away the Dell Precision laptop and the one-year subscription to Creative Cloud through Adobe. That's gonna happen next week. And we'll be reaching out to the winning individual via email, so stand by and check your inbox. Make sure to download the 10 chapter PDF so you can have access and reference and have all the specifics that I've been discussing. So thank you for taking the time to join me. I hope you enjoyed the ride and I hope you have some takeaways and I hope you get back to work and be able to tell any story you want knowing that you have the tools and skills and the new knowledge of how to tackle any obstacle in post-production. Thank you all so much and feel free to reach out to me anytime online through any of my social channels. I'm always here to help. I'd love to answer any questions that you have. Thank you all again and we'll see you later.